Hello guys, welcome to another session. In this session, we are going to learn about flow controls in Python. So let's jump into the discussion first and then we will do some exercises. So what we are going to do in this session? In this session, we are going to know about the comparison operator, which is one of the basic building block of flow control in Python. So where we will look into all those operators, what are the operators which we use for comparison and on the basis of that we will further write the programs so these are the operator which will return boolean value so once we understand that comparison operator then we will move further and look into the logical operators what are the logical operators so logical operators we will use and or and not once we understand it then we will use this thing in the if statement and their families so there are variety of if statements available within flow control so we will look into one by one what are those we will look into in the family we will look into if block then we will also look into if else block then we will look into if else ladder and then we will look into nested if and then at last we will look into if expressions so let's jump into the spider editor and then afterwards we will understand each of the operators and the if statement and their families and the expressions so let's look into the spider editor so before if statement we will look into the comparison operator so what are those a comparison operator is an operator that performs some form of test and return and returns true and false value so let's look into the operator one by one so we will start with equal to operators so double equal to means for equals so that means two values are equals or not it will return that so let's look into that so suppose if you are writing three equal to three so what will it return you can run it shift enter so it will return true that means these two values are equal if you try three equal to four and try again then it will return false so this is one of the operator you should remember so now moving to other operator that is called not equal to that means two values are equal or not that it will return true and false so how do we check that can if you write three not equal to three then what it should return correct it will return false so here if you run it select it so it it has returned false now if you again run it 3 not equal to 4 then it will return true so see here now moving to the other operator we will look into less than operator for that we need to write 3 less than 4 so it will return yes true see here and if it will if you write 3 is less than 2 what it will return exactly it return false correct so now moving further we will look into greater than equal to now so what is that greater than sign so it will return 3 is greater than 2 what it will return tell me exactly it will return true because 3 is greater than 2 same with if we will write 2 is greater than 3 what it will return no it will return false so these are the small small example I am showing you right now because you should be comfortable with these operators how to use it we are not going to use it like this way we are going to use it with if statement but I want that be prior to using that with if statement I want that you should be comfortable and know about all these operator so that you will use it for actual usage then you can be very comfortable with these operators so moving further now we will look into less than equal to sign so it will check for equality as well if 3 is less than equal to 3 tell me the answer true it will return true because 3 is equal to 3 so if you will check that 3 is less than equal to 2 it will return false same with greater than equal to sign we will use so what is the sign this is the sign now if we will write again 3 is greater than equal to tell me the answer correctly it will return true now again 3 is greater than equal to 4 
tell me the answer yes it will return false so now these are the operators which falls into comparison category so you should remember it have a count of it how many these operators are it has total six number of operators you just remember it now moving further we will look into the logical operator so so far we have seen the comparison operator now moving further and we will look into the logical operator so what are those operators like let's look into that so the logical operator falls into and or and not so we will look into that first we have to understand that basically it will be used to compare more than one condition if you see here then you will find that it is comparing two conditions one condition is checking that 3 is less than 4 and second condition is checking that 5 is greater than 4 so in programming sometime what happens that we need to check more than one condition for a given situation then on that time these logical operators comes very handy so you should remember that when to use and operator and when to use or operator so let's look into one example and later point of the course we will look into how we can use it with if statement and family of if statement with all these operators so let's move further and look into editor now so now here suppose that if you want to compare two conditions so far we have seen one condition only now we are want that we want to look into 3 is less than 2 and we will use a parenthesis over here and here this operator we will use and 3 is less than 1 so what is the answer it will return false collectively see here the same way here we are using and operator we are and operator example now here we will look into a true case where 3 is less than 4 and 3 is less than 5 so both the condition is true then it will return true if any one of the condition is false in the and statement it will return false for this case it will return true now we will look into an example over here that 3 is less than 4 and we will check that is 3 is less than 2 so one condition is false over here so it will return false that means that means true and false become false if both are true then it become true so you should remember it so you should remember this thing like this true plus true is always true remember it I'm just giving an example true plus false is always false false plus false is always false so such scenario if you get a situation to check such scenario then you have to use and operator so this is the example you should remember it it will return why it is returning the last value is why it is returning false because one of the value is false and one of the value is true and true plus false is always false so moving further now we will look into the or operators so what is or operator so now in in or operator it will be any one of the condition should be true so for example i am taking this example one of the value is true and another value is false if we will write like this and run it shift enter then it will return true why because one of the condition is true that the reason it return true so in or case you have to remember or scenario you should remember true plus false equal to true true plus true any one of the condition is true then it will return true if it is both are false then it will return false so any one condition should be true so you should remember this one this is very important and sometime we use not operator for example not 3 is less than 2 so what is the answer it should return exactly true why because it negated it so it returned false and then it applied 
not over it not of false is true so you should remember it not is used to negate the value whatever the value it return it will opposite that value if it return true then it make it false if it return false then it will make it true some in certain scenarios of programming we will use it so let's move further and look into the if statements so so far we have seen the comparison operator and logical operator now we are moving further and we are going to look into if statement and their family there are variety of way we can write if statement if statement will go without else block as well so let's look into that first we will understand the syntax what is the syntax of if statement so it will be like this so let's look into the spider editor so we are going to look into if statement so here if example so single if we are going to use for example if we are going to grab an input from user so how to grab it num int and the input there is a function called input if you will write it then it will ask for input from user enter a number for example and then after that we can check that whether number is less than zero that means it is negative or not so we are going to use the if statement over here and see here we are using comparison operator and now as per the input from the user it will return that number is negative we need to check the negative numbers so this program you are writing to check the value is negative or not if it is not negative if it is not less than zero then it will not go into this thing and later point of time we will look into the else part of it we will write else block of this program as well so run it if you will run it so it will ask for input so here it is asking for input see here enter a number if we are writing minus one then it will go into this loop so what it is telling that minus one is negative that is true now for example if you will again run it and if you will write one then it will no not go into this condition see here it haven't gone because now in this program we are not handling what will happen if you are providing an positive number so to handle such cases we are going to introduce an else block so how to write else block now here we will write the same thing and here we will write that if number is greater than zero then it will return it is a positive number so we are going to use else block so this is the way you can use the else block positive so that means now if you will run it so it will handle earlier it was not handling the else block if you are having uh, if you are providing the value which is greater than zero then it was not printing anything now we are handling that so here now we will run it again and if suppose if you are writing again one then it is returning one is positive number so this is the way you can use if else block now moving further so we have seen two thing now if without else block now we have seen also else block as well now we will look into else if ladder block so we will use the same example and we here we can write else if and here number is greater than zero and at the last we will check that equals to so to do that else block over here and we will check else block we will keep some i don't know so i intentionally i am keeping this example so that you can know about this thing i don't know so here now what will happen we will run it and we will pass three examples i will show you three example over here so first i will write minus one so it return minus one is negative now again i will run this example and this time i will pass positive value so that is one so it return one is positive see here we have used a elif ladder now again i will run it and this time i will pass zero and zero equal to zero and i haven't handled in this program so it will tell that i don't know so see here at last it return i don't know so this way you can use 
LCIF ladder. So now we have seen that LCIF ladder. Now moving further and we will look into nested if. So these are the example I am using is dummy example over here right now. But when we will do the assignment, this is going to be very handy. I want that you should practice and you should know about how we are using it so that at the time of doing assignment you feel comfortable with all these syntax. So in the e fails, nested e fails, we need to take an example. For example, we are going to check whether it is snowing or not. And on the basis of that, we are printing some information. So if it is temperature is equal to minus one and if temp is less than zero, then we will print that it's freezing. So right here it is freezing because it is less than zero. Now we have checked one if statement and within that we are going to check that whether it is snowing or not. So this is here if you check there in the if we are going to use another if. So this is called nested if. So in certain scenario we are going to use nested if and we have to remember the syntax. So here we will print some message put on boots. Now we will print some message for the first if statement time for hot chocolates and then at last we will print some common message print some message by or something whatever you want now we will run it and see what it is printing see oh it first went to the as per we have provided snowing is true that means this is a boolean value it is going to check and then here we have uh, given the value minus one. So it will check that minus one is less than zero. That means it will go into this condition. And once it is being true, it will check that whether it is snowing or not. So we have provided true value. That means it will check this one as well. And it will print put on boots. And then afterwards it will print that because we are into this this if it statement so it will print that time for hot chocolate and at last it will print buy so this is the way you can use nested if we will look into in our real example as well when we do the assignment or when we do our projects we can use it so for a time being you should remember that with a small example how to use nested if so moving further what is next we will look into that so we have seen that basic if statement without else then we have seen with else and then we have seen else if ladder and last we have seen nested if now we are going to see that if expression what is if expression so that means we are going to write within a single line the if statement so this is the syntax you should remember that if this is the way you can write the condition if the condition is true then the result will be written first and then if condition is falling into else block it should be written after else keyword so you should remember that the result of if condition will first written at the very beginning then if condition then else block and then afterwards we need to write the else result so you should read you should remember it so now write the same thing within fider editor let's jump into that so now we will write the if expression so we are going to use a status variable and here we will check the entire we will write the entire if expression so we are going to check if age is greater than 12 that means the person is teenager so result it should return teenager now we will check that and two condition we need to check and age is less than 20 then the person is teenager 
else we need to write not teenager so here now we will print the status print status now run it but we need to also define age here 15 for example so now we will run it and check that what the status it will print so it print teenager so the intention of this example is that the entire if statement or if expression is written in one line so sometime it is really very handy to write such if expression so see here we have first write that condition and the output of this condition will be written first here you should remember that and then here else block is having their own statement own expression after this so you should remember that the first step you have to remember that first you write the if statement and then the output of this if it is true then you have to write the value of result value over here and then you write else and the result of else you will write here so this thing you should remember that so this is what I wanted to show you entire flow control example I know that it is very long session but uh, it is really very important to know all this in a step by step manner so that you can use it in your program journey and this is going to be one time learning once you learn this almost it is same in every programming language so if you are getting difficulty in understanding this thing let me know on my twitter handle you can write the course name and the uh, portion where you are having the doubt you can write me in my twitter handle i will respond back the moment i will see the questions but i tried to give you best of the knowledge in a step by a step manner so that you will not face any difficulty and you will not face any difficulty while learning flow control in python so on this note i am closing this session see you in the next session bye bye